Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is for you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca, and this is my channel where I talk about all the houseplant things. I'm a hand talker, if you hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a vlog and we are gonna spend the day together and I'm super excited I did this the day before last and I really enjoyed it There's some videos that really stick out to me as like extra special or I really enjoyed them more than others And that was probably one of them. It was just so fun to spend the day together um, No pressure type of situation. So I've woken up. I've eaten breakfast. I watched my garden answer video So I feel pretty ready to start the day we are going to go out to Habitat for Humanity and look for some stuff for the greenhouse because I decided something. I've been watching a lot of Exo McKenna and I've been kind of inspired by her formatting that she does. So she'll do a vlog and then she'll do like formal DIY videos. And so I think, especially with the greenhouse, there's so, so many details. And I'm a person who wants to give like all the details because I find those videos to be the most beneficial. Like when I find someone's video and they have literally told me every single detail, every single thought that they had about something, that is the best and that's what I strive to do. But I know that that's, it makes the video longer. Sometimes the information can feel outdated pretty quickly. Like for example, with the greenhouse video, you know, there's some support pieces that we put up in the greenhouse that are not there anymore. And it's just because we're fumbling through the project and like trying to learn as we go, but it feels pointless to leave that in. But like, that's a bunch of footage that I took and I feel weird wasting it. So anyway, point is, I am going to use vlogs as a way to sort of like throw out ideas, throw out like some plans, like if I'm shopping for something, put that in the video, in, in the vlog, and then have a more polished version in the actual greenhouse video where I'm like, hey, I have these things for the greenhouse and I shopped for this in this vlog and you can go find it here. Because I think that will make everything just a little bit more like I can add in as many details as I want without it feeling like a lot of steps and a very, very long video. So I kind of did that last week with the holes that I'm digging and I need to order another auger, like a longer one. I actually found one that is four feet long and that's gonna be perfect for the hole that I need to dig. So I'm pretty excited about that. So we're gonna do that. But anyway, I just wanted to give you a little update on like the formatting of my future videos with regarding the greenhouse and all of that kind of stuff. Like any big projects that I have, I'd like to show more behind the scenes, but it's hard to put the behind the scenes and the final project in the same video without it feeling like really long or really disorganized. You know what I mean? So anyway, we're gonna go to Habitat for Humanity. I need to find maybe some bricks if I can. And well, like a lot of bricks because I wanted to brick path and people suggested that I go to habitat to find those things so I have a store like a restore a habitat restore and I also need to find an exterior door because the greenhouse needs a door and I was looking online at exterior doors and they're very expensive like wood ones are like a thousand dollars which is insane to me and the fiber I think it's like fiberglass or it's like not wood those ones are still like three, four, five hundred dollars, which is insane. So I'm gonna see if I can find anything that I like at the Habitat store. Maybe I can paint it a fun color. We'll just have to see. a door and I'm really excited about it. You might be able to see it back there. It is a white door with a glass in the middle of it and the only thing that I'm concerned about is, well there's two things. Number one, it's 32 inches wide which is a little bit on the smaller side so I don't know if it's gonna look weird having a small door in this like big greenhouse but I'm going to at least try it out and see what I think, like I'm gonna put it up to it and see if it feels too small. And if it does feel too small, I can probably resell it. It won't be that big of a deal. I don't know if Habitat for Humanity takes returns, but I'll figure, I'll figure it out. The second thing is it didn't come with a frame. So, which like most like, I'm assuming most secondhand doors wouldn't. So, because that means you have to take out the entire 
situation from the house. I am going to have to build a frame for it, which I'm a little bit nervous about. I have had many issues with doors and door frames. <laughs> In the upstairs of my house, we tried to replace all the doors because they were just like hollow wood doors and um, it was a really big pain and so actually I remember that Exo McKenna made a bunch of frames for her doors and she installed a ton of doors by herself so I'm thinking that I'll be able to do it if I just watch her video and a few others. We will just have to see but I think that's all I had to do out so let me just check my... I made a little list of things that I wanted to accomplish for this video slash this day. So yes, now I need to go home and order some fans and vents for the greenhouse. And then, yeah, we'll see where the day takes us from there. We're back home and I started uploading a video while I was gone. Like I set it up before I left because my videos take a really long time to upload. And I feel like if you listen to the podcast, you know my podcast brought it together with Adam and Nicole. Um, you know my internet struggles because we experience it all the time. But basically, I live far out from town and it's really hard to get good internet out here. Definitely not high speed internet by any means. So it takes like minimum an hour and a half to upload videos and that's when they're short. So like my typical videos, like 20, 30 minutes long, it's more like three hours. Um, so when I first moved here, it was six hours to upload and I would just do it overnight and hope that my computer didn't like shut off or something <laughs> would happen. Like the internet would suddenly disconnect and whatever. So thankfully I have um, a different network now that is pretty, not pretty fast. <laughs> It's a little faster on uploads, but everything else, it's really not very good. So I use it just to upload videos, which is just, it's a whole thing. This video is still uploading. It has like an hour and a half left, but I need to order some stuff. So I'm going to see if I can swing this while it's uploading. I don't know how my internet's going to do. But first of all, I have the auger and it's an extended length bulb auger, three inches wide and 48 inches long. I got the long one. That's four feet. So it should be great And also it's kind of nice because I can dig holes without having to like really hunch over that much So I'm definitely going to be using these things more often because I didn't realize how good it would work But I went to um, check out yesterday and I didn't remember my card information and my wallet was in the car So I'm gonna finish that out today. <laughs> it's not working because my internet is being slow because I'm uploading a video. So I've got an hour left on this upload, an hour and eight minutes. Um, we're gonna do something else for an hour and eight minutes and then I'll come back to this so that I don't try to rip my hair out. So I've got some stuff to water. As I said in my last vlog, I try not to get everything on the same schedule. And I wanna clarify what I mean by that because that doesn't mean that I have my plants on a schedule where it's like, oh, every other Tuesday I water these plants. It's not like that. It's more like, hmm, I'm walking around my house. Okay, we're walking. And I look to my left. This is my right. Sorry, I'm really bad at lefts and rights. I look to my right and I see, hmm, that Syndapsis pictus is looking a little bit curly. That's usually my indication that the wall needs to be watered as the Syndapsis pictus looks curly. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, okay. I have that in my head noted. Tomorrow, the next day or the next day after that, I need to water this room. And as I'm watering, I'm usually like picking up the pot, obviously to put it on top of the plant potty to see what the weight of the pot is. And if it feels really heavy and the soil looks wet still, I'm obviously not going to water that plant. Sometimes I'll bring out the moisture meter if I'm really not sure, bring out the big guns. But typically, all of those things need to be watered around the same time. So again, it's not an every Tuesday thing or an every other Tuesday thing. It's a, hmm, that one looks thirsty. Everyone else around it probably is too. Yeah, I felt like that was important because I don't want anybody thinking that I'm like, oops, knocking over plants. I don't want anybody to get in their heads that you should, you know, water on a very strict schedule like that because it's not. That's not smart. Plants are gonna need water at different rates, just depending on the season, depending on how much light they're getting, um, depending on how deeply you watered them last time, etc. I watered my mammy eye a few days ago because she really needed it. I watered some of the kitchen plants. I watered my kitchen shelf plants, 
right here on the same day that I watered those plants in there because some of them were looking very droopy. But I'm gonna go get my plant folio and we are going to water right here. Also, you guys, I fell victim. Oops, smacked myself in the face. I fell victim to this. And I have to admit that this is pretty awesome. This like spray soap is pretty cool. Sometimes like, ooh, I just sprayed a fruit fly and I got it. <laughs> Sometimes it's just nice to like try out the new product. And I did, and I really like it. Daniel really likes it too. He's the one that mainly does the dishes and he says that it's very fun. So cool. It just sprays on. Very fun. Also, I fell victim to this, the scrub daddy. My nephews, when they were in town, they were like, is it really legit? And I said, yes, I really love the scrub daddy. <laughs> it's great for cleaning the stove top because it doesn't scratch. just took out my billy to water it and you guys there's already roots coming out the bottom of this pot i feel like man i'm actually so surprised but i don't think that i'm gonna repot it yet ew sticky trap stuck in my hair i don't think i'm gonna repot it yet because sometimes that happens just because the roots are positioned like right over the hole and they just like find their way out but usually when whole, when roots are sticking out of the bottom of your pot, that means it's time to repot. But um, I'm not gonna repot it yet. It, I recently repotted it, so we're gonna give it a little bit more time. But look at this new leaf that it put out. It's so pretty, I love it. I think that this is one that could come out of the greenhouse, but I'm kind of hesitant because I don't know where I would put it. Like I don't really have a good spot for it right now. So it'll just stay in there for now. I mean, it's not like, getting hurt by being in there so she's just gonna stay and until i find a good spot for it but oh my gosh it's so cute okay my camera's gonna die pretty much any second now but i have some things that i need to repot so hopefully i can beat the clock so i have this pot from terra vita and i'm going to pot up this hoya velosa that i got from nicole unfortunately it has flat mites which is this like awful awful pest okay i completely missed the pot it's this awful pest that is really hard to see but i bought a macro lens a couple weeks ago and I looked at the plant with it because I was noticing some weird stuff going on. And lo and behold, flat mites all over it. So actually Adam, not dude, my friend, made a live presentation of flat mites, like basically just sharing his experience with them. And if you're curious about what flat mites are, if you're suspicious you might have them, basically it causes your Hoya to not fully develop new growth like the new growth will fall off or it'll be like really wrinkly and like deformed which is pretty common for any pest infestation but the flat mites are extra lethal because they're just so hard to see so you can have them for months and have no idea so and they like get into like all of the tiniest little crevices of your house plants so definitely go check out his live. I'll have it linked down below if you're interested. It was like a cool presentation. I really liked it. It was very entertaining. So if you want to go check that out, I'll have it linked. And he provided a ton of information with photos from his microscope of flat mites, what they look like, the damage that they do to plants, etc. So super helpful and informative video or it was a live stream, but yeah, super helpful and informative. She's in and repotted. 
I have another Hoya. This is my Hoya Elliptica that I got from Land of Lace, Land of Alice Studio. I unboxed that on YouTube and it's been planted in cocoa and cocoa and like some soil substrate. And I'm just going to take off just the extra and leave quite a bit of it and um, just pop that into a pot and it'll be totally fine. I need to go grab a pot though. I think we're gonna do this pot. This pot has seen many plants and it's been good luck for me. So hopefully it'll continue on with that. I used to have a Fetonia in this pot, so you can say that it was a, a good pot for me. <laughs> well, it wasn't really because the Fetonia is no longer with us, but that's how Fetonia are, you know? Not super reliable, but very beautiful. Okay, she's all potted up, and now that she's got some nutrients, I think that we should see some new growth, hopefully pretty soon. My friends, luck has fallen upon us. The light has not fallen upon us, but luck has. So my camera died, as you saw by the abrupt ending there. And I was like, shoot, well, I can't order stuff because I'm uploading. I can't film because I got no batteries. So I plugged in my batteries and one of them was half charged. So I've only been waiting around for like 15 minutes. And during that 15 minutes, I cut this block that I showed in my planks video into a shorter plank and I hope that it's focusing on my face. Usually when it's dark, this lens isn't very good. So I have these two baby planks because I, th I think I'm only actually gonna be using one of them, but, oh no, no, I am gonna be using both of them. So I have this Burly Marks Fantasy, which looks really bad. It's a top cut off of the plant that I have and um, I feel like, well, clearly it looks terrible but I'm thinking maybe if I give it something to climb, it might look better over time. So we're just gonna have to see. But it needs a pot, and I'm trying to decide what pot to put it in because, hmm, maybe this one? How does that look together? Yeah, that's not bad, but this is like a, a really beautiful special pot, but okay. We're gonna manifest it being like a happy plant and we're gonna put it in something that a happy plant would live in. First of all, it's been living in cocoa peat for a, a long time. And let me show you, can you see that root action? We've got some good root action. I like propagating in cocoa peat a lot because I just find that it's a good mix. Um, I don't know, I just like it. it. It mimics soil. It's kind of like sphagnum moss, but just slightly different. And I've had it sitting on this little chopstick for a long time. So I'm just gonna put those roots all the way to the bottom here and then I'm gonna have this. I should have checked it before I actually cut this because I would really love for it to be much taller. So it's gonna have to sit at the top of the soil in order to be the correct length for me. This stem is just like extra long. I should have rooted it like up here probably which was a mistake. I don't know why I didn't do that initially because now I have roots all the way here at the bottom. I'm gonna position it like more towards the front of the pot so that I can stick this in here. See, ideally this would be taller already. Why did I cut it before I checked? This piece is a little taller. Okay, maybe I could put it on top of even more soil. Ooh, and I was wondering how I was gonna get it to stick into the soil, but I think I can just get it attached to this chopstick and stick that down in there. Let me get my staple gun. Hold on. Okay, you guys, chopsticks? Kind of the move. It's like a nice tight fit right there. I'm just gonna stick that in there. Oh, but I do need to come down a little bit. That is like a, a quick crash course on how I do these little poles, it's a little bit wobbly. Like it honestly could use another chopstick. Thankfully, I always keep these when I get them from restaurants. And sometimes they'll even come in, like when I buy um, like polyfill, it'll have a little stick so that you can like more easily stuff your toys. So there's my little Burly Marks Fantasy, my sad Burly Marks Fantasy. And I'm gonna see if it being attached to this makes any sort of a difference. I am gonna use something to like strap it on pretty tight. Like, ooh, 
I remember somebody said to try the tape more often because I, I said that I tried tape one time and it worked. So I'm gonna do that again. Let's try tape. Okay, I have it taped in three different places, as you can see. And I don't know, I feel like this was kind of dumb because it's already reaching the top. But we're just gonna see if it even attaches. And if it does, I'll figure out what to do from there. I could probably pretty easily add on something else. But yeah, we're gonna leave it at that and see what happens. I've got another plank. And this one is for this gal here. This is a Syngonium macro, uh, no, Syngonium chia pens. <laughs> and I was thinking about this plank for it, but the plank is a little too big for the, well, it is too big for the pot. It, it extends over the pot, but I'm gonna try to use it anyway and just put the sticks, like two sticks on the front, two sticks on the back with a staple gun and push it down in and see how secure it is. We're just gonna experiment with it. Okay, but I also have this one that needs a plank. And I feel like maybe this plank would be better. Let's see. Oh, it does fit. I think I'd prefer a two by four for this one. I'm not sure. What do we think? It'll be too late by the time you can tell me. <laughs> but it does need something because it's starting to just like do the Monstera thing where it flies away. I've got two bamboo pieces. I just cut one in half. And I found out that my staple gun is big enough to go around these. It's not like super tight. Okay, now it is. <laughs> just in case you're not familiar with my method for this, I staple stakes onto my planks of wood because the wood will be less likely to rot faster if it is not coming into contact with moisture very often. So yeah, I'll, I'll do two on the front and two on the back and that just really helps to stabilize it. But I'm just gonna make sure that it is the right length sticking out the bottom here. She finally has a plank and I'm not gonna use tape to secure all these top leaves together. Um, I'm just going to wait a little bit because I'm, I can't find my twine. My twine is missing. As my stuff always goes missing, it's really not that big of a surprise. I have been online for the last hour, probably, just trying to figure out what vent opening I can, what vent I can buy for this exhaust fan that I currently have. It's, it has a 27 by 27 inch opening and I'm finding lots of 24 inch or like if I find a 27 inch opening like vent because basically it's a big hole and I'm supposed to put a vent over the hole and the opening is exactly 27 inches. So I would need to have something slightly smaller like 26 and 3 eighths or something like that but I'm only finding like 27 and 5 eighths and things like that. So I don't really know what to do. Okay, it's also confusing because like the opening size is different than like the overall unit size, I think. It's just very confusing. But something that um, Jeff told me a couple days ago when I went and saw him to get the exhaust fan is, um, well, I'm obviously gonna need fans like throughout the greenhouse to get the air moving. And so what he has in one of his greenhouses that I really liked was he has like a bunch of fans facing one direction and a bunch of fans facing another direction, the opposite direction. So it kind of makes like a circle. And with the exhaust fan pulling in the air from one end of the greenhouse and then the other like shutter being open on the other end, cause I'm gonna have an automatic opener for that. Um, it just pulls the air through like this way. And then the circle of fans will kind of make a circle. <laughs> I need like four of them and I've been looking around online, but he said to get them from Valley Vet Supply because you need like indoor outdoor fans, like fans that can get wet. I mean, they're not gonna get wet probably, like I'm not gonna be like spraying them, but they can withstand moisture. And it's true, he told me that the Valley Vet Supply fans are way cheaper. They're like $100 a piece, but if you look on like a greenhouse website, they're like $250. So it's like the plant markup, but it's basically the exact same product, except one is meant for horses and animals, and the other is meant for house plants and just like greenhouse environments. So it's pretty crazy, the plant markup. And I'm going to be getting four 18 inch fans. And yeah, they're 
$31 a piece, which is pretty expensive, but it's a lot cheaper than going with like a greenhouse company. And these are just going to be screwed on to the cross beams that I have going like this way in the greenhouse. So they're tall enough, they'll be like sort of up in the air or I might have them like down. We'll just have to see. I realized that searching for a 27 inch fan is not giving me anything. So I started looking for a 26 inch because usually when they say it's 26, it's actually like a little bit more. So I found one on, on eBay that I think will be good for this exhaust fan. And if it doesn't work for the exhaust fan, like size wise, I can just use it as the front vent and um, I don't have to use it necessarily for the fan that I already have. So it'll still get used no matter what. Okay, so hello from future Becca. <laughs> this is the vent that I ordered in that video and I think that this has cleared up a lot of questions that I had because I was so confused about the sizing as you saw. So this fan was a, this vent is a 26 inch vent and here is the hole as you saw in an earlier clip that's what it looks like and i was thinking like for some reason i forgot that the vent would have this situation here and this situation needs to sit on the inside here so that this lip thing is resting along this here does this make sense i hope so what I need to do is I need to measure from inside to inside and not edge on the outside to edge on the outside because what we're really needing to know is the dimensions of this box, not even necessarily this part with this, this extra panel here. With that knowledge, I'm going to measure this and make an order somewhere and hope that that is correct. I will definitely keep you updated. At the point that I'm filming this little section, I have not done that yet because I just, I'm in the middle of editing the video and I figured a little visual would be much easier to show you rather than me trying to explain it with words. Cause I'm not very good at that when I don't know what I'm talking about. The vent saga continues, but I think I'm going in the right direction now. Okay friends, it has again been a few hours. I finished up my research and then I just needed to like go lay down for a little bit. So I laid in bed and I just like listened to a book and just had like an, uh, an active nap. Is that, I don't even know if that's what that's called, but anyway, I didn't sleep, but I did just rest and it was very nice. So now I'm all changed. I'm going to my workout class, got my hair up and I'm gonna leave off the vlog here. So thank you very much for watching and hanging out with me today. Today was a bit more of a draining work day, <laughs> if I do say so myself, but um, it's not always super fun, like activity driven stuff. Sometimes I just have to get on the computer and I think that's what really drains me the most, but I am gonna edit a video tonight when I get back from my workout class probably. I should have done that this afternoon, but instead I laid in bed. So I'm gonna make up for that time later and edit a video and I don't really mind editing. It's kind of mindless and honestly pretty fun. So it's not too big of a deal when I have to edit at night. But anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.